Hi everyone, my name is Matthew Adele and I'm based here at the Uni of Cambridge. And today I'll be talking to you about our recent work uh, on functional paleoecology from Southeast Australia. Uh, and of course, uh, the work wouldn't have been possible without the team from the Australia uh, that helped in sorting the plant trade data for the Australian region and also for uh, Simon Heverly and Annika Havertz that have been encouraging the deposition of pollen record to the new tomato database in, in Australia, especially uh, Hanika that has also spent a lot of time and efforts trying to make sure the polling data are sort of ready to use and already clean. And the main motivation behind the study is the fact that um, there isn't much understanding about uh, the different facets of ecosystem in, in Southeast Australia. And in fact, uh, it's the case globally. And Southeast Australia is one of the regions on Earth that is actually experiencing a uh, major climate impact. Uh, we can see in the recent 2020 uh, bushfire that claimed billions of animals. But in terms of management, there is a need to actually understand how different ecosystem facets actually work and not to just base management on one facet of the ecosystem. And currently, our understanding of uh, past vegetation in Southeast Australia and in many parts of the world uh, is actually based on the conventional pollen analysis, uh, looking at uh, percentage of pollen, uh, taxa through time, which provide information about the composition of species as, as, uh, as well as the relative changes in abundance through time. And there are other, uh, some other new um, uh, approach now that use pollen data to uh, reconstruct changes in species diversity as well as uh, community diversity. Uh, the community diversity sometimes they are interpreted as turnover or rate of vegetation change or beta diversity. And but in terms of the functional properties of vegetation communities, there isn't much understanding in this uh, aspect. Uh, and the functional traits of plant communities are really important because they sort of connect directly to disturbance, especially climate. So before you can actually see major shift in species composition or community composition in a, in, in a vegetation. Um, the underlying mechanism is the traits of plants to first react to changes in climate or any sort of environmental disturbance, which would then lead to a shift in uh, composition and then species diversity in the long term. And the beauty of this functional paleoecology, which actually uh, involves linking pollen data to modern plant traits is that you can target the traits to uh, interrogate different disturbance. You know, as shown in previous studies, you can use it to look at how plants or plant communities responding directly to human activities, to climate, and, or to fire regime in the past. And so, one of some of the reasons uh, there hasn't been many study in this area. Uh, perhaps it's because of the challenges uh, associated with data processing it's because you need to first process data from the polling database like Neotoma to make sure the tax the, the taxons the, in terms of the taxonomy is well harmonized uh, make sure, making sure the chronology is, is is also in place and then you also need to sort through the the trade database which uh, sometimes can be much more enormous than the polling database. Uh, the trace data sometimes can be hundreds of thousands of, of data. And then you need to get uh, select uh, an appropriate method to actually link this to uh, data sets together. But in the case of our study, uh, the, the, the polling data set we used for Southeast Australia was more or less ready to, to, uh, to go. Thanks to Anika, she already did the Make sure, made sure the chronology was up to date, the taxonomic harmonization was already in place. So it was a bit, uh, it was more or less like um, straightforward to actually conduct this, uh, this study in addition to the efforts of the Austrian uh, database, of course. So what we did in the study was to link uh, close to 70 fossil polling data sets to uh, four major plant traits uh, of plant species across the Southeast Australia uh, region. And then 
we calculated the weighted average means for each of those uh, plant traits that are directly linked to uh, climate impact, and then also estimated functional diversity through time during the Holocene. And the functional diversity uh, is a good uh, metric to have a sense of what the ecosystem performance and productivity was like uh, in the past. And one of the major findings uh, was that we found this oscillation in functional diversity between the western and eastern part of Southeast Australia through time. And in 2012, uh, Fletcher and Moreno hypothesized that there was this zonal shift in the strength of southern westerly uh, in uh, southern westerly winds in Southeast Australia, uh, but there, 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 uh, no record have actually shown this pattern after that, like especially in terms of polling record, we've not been able to find this pattern with the conventional polling analysis. And even through land cover reconstruction, the rate of change reconstruction, we, uh, we couldn't find this trend. But with a functional paleoecological approach, we're able to actually narrow, uh, nail down this fine climate impact in the uh, vegetation communities. As we can see here, the oscillation between the west and eastern side. And another major finding was that during the dry and much more cyclical late Holocene climate, we, we found that, that the vegetation in Eastern Australia, which is dominated by sclerophyllous woodland, were more functionally resilient uh, despite the changes in climate. That is, they were more or less adapting to this climatic shift, whereas the vegetation in the Western part were just sort of the, the functional resilience or functional diversity just decline uh, during this period. Uh, this, and this includes the Western Tasmania rainforest, which is a major world heritage site uh, and has one of the oldest uh, temperate rainforest species in the world. And, uh, and also meanwhile, in, earlier on in 2020, we did a rate of change study for Southeast Australia. And we found out that in fact, the Western Tasmania uh, rainforest was had the most stable vegetation composition for most of the Holocene. And this sort of shows why uh, management uh, decisions or management planning should not only you know, look at one facet of ecosystem and make management decisions. There's a need to actually look at different aspects of you know, basing. If, if you based, uh, base uh, a decision or a management strategy uh, on the turnover or rate of change record, you know, that can sometimes lead to uh, mis uh, manage, uh, lead to like erroneous judgments of you know what to look for, what to target in terms of restoration and conservation. So, so in, in Western Tasmania, it's showing stability in the composition through time, whereas uh, in terms of functional diversity or the productivity, it's not the case. It's actually the most at risk to climate impact. And also comparing functional diversity to turnover uh, or rate of change, we found out that a stable ecosystem is not always a functionally you know, diverse one. So based on those findings, we were able to make our recommendations that uh, it's really important to start incorporating uh, functional traits survey of ecosystems during uh, interventions to, you know, to better plan management strategies and also to uh, especially for western uh, western part of southeast australia which is most at risk and also to carefully you know plan the strategies such as such that to maintain you know balance between different facets of ecosystems especially when it comes to diversity scales is it the species diversity the community diversity and the functional diversity so to plan this management such that this there's a, a balance is achieved uh, between those faces and of course it's also good to you know better define our uh, management outcomes you know, when planning restoration work or, or conservation work to be specific if we uh, if the aim is to restore species diversity or community diversity or functional diversity or, or to enhance uh, productivity as well so it's, it's really good to define that more, much more clearly and also and of course put all these things into perspective before making uh, judgment in terms of uh, policies and uh, uh, management strategies. So the next uh, stage now, uh, I'm currently also uh, discussing with colleagues to, you know, take this work further to, you know, to either do the functional paleoecology analysis using global polling data sets and uh, uh, plant traits, but the challenges associated with data 
processing uh, is a bit a lot uh, when you know considering a large spatial scale. So uh, currently, I'm leaning towards taking each region uh, a step uh, after the other, and then yeah, we can go from that's where we are at the moment. Uh, I'll stop talking with that. Thank you.